and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bevel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church, and today brings us to Genesis chapter 45 on our 70th day, working our way through the Bible. We're in Genesis, we're in Matthew, a little bit of Psalms and Proverbs sprinkled in, just beginning our three-year journey through the Word of God. I hope it has been beneficial and profitable to you. If any questions come up about the study, you can email the church, forresthillpca at gmail.com. That's forresthillpca at gmail.com. Be happy to respond to any questions that you have. If you have any questions about our church or anything, uh, be happy to respond to you. Let's get into God's Word, but let's pray first together. Father, thank you so much for another day, another chapter of your word, another opportunity to spend time with you, learning from you. Teach us and grow us, we pray, in your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Genesis chapter 45. Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. He cried, make everyone go out from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and he wept aloud so that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph! Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they came near, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt, and now... Do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land for these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors." So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me as a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children, and your children's children, and your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, for there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come into poverty. And now your eyes see and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see, that it is my mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father of all my honor in Egypt, and of all you have seen. Hurry, and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept on his neck, and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. When the report was heard in Pharaoh's house, Joseph's brothers have come. It pleased Pharaoh and his servants. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, Do this! Load your beast and go back to the land of Canaan and take your father and your households and come to me. And I will give you the best of the land of Egypt and you shall eat the fat of the land. And you, Joseph, are commanded to say, Do this! Take wagons, from the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives and bring your father and come. Have no concern for your goods, for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. The sons of Pharaoh did the sons of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them wagons according to the command of Pharaoh, and gave them provisions for the journey. To each and all of them he gave a change of clothes. But to Benjamin he gave 300 shekels of silver and five changes of clothes. To his father he sent as follows, 10 donkeys loaded with the good things of Egypt and 10 female donkeys loaded with grain, bread, and provision for his father on the journey. Then he sent his brothers away, and as they departed, he said to them, Do not quarrel on the way. 
So they went up out of Egypt and came to the land of Canaan to their father Jacob. And they told him, Joseph is still alive, and he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. And his heart became numb, for he did not believe them. But when they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said to them, and when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of their father Jacob revived. And Israel said, It is enough. My son Joseph is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. <laughs> this has been a long time coming. This is the chapter, right? We've been waiting for this for days and days of thinking, man, all this testing, all these trials, all this time, all this waiting. God brings it all together in such a perfect and glorious way in this chapter. Joseph is overcome by emotion. He can stand it no longer. He, is, he has to reveal himself to his brothers. He still doesn't fully trust his brothers. How do I say that? Well, he says, is my father still alive? His brothers had said that he was still alive. His brothers had said, if we don't go back with Benjamin, he'll be going down to, you know, his grave in grief. But Joseph, you know, he's been betrayed by his brothers, to be fair. I mean, he's got good reason not to trust them entirely. And so he doesn't trust them entirely. But, and they're not sure what to do either. Like, they're distressed. They're dismayed. They're dismayed at his presence because they realize what they've done their great sin, the guilt that's haunted them for years. They realize who Joseph is and what position he's in. They realize what he can do. And this is not going to go away. This doesn't just go away in a moment. When you have such great guilt and such great shame over some terrible thing that you've done, it doesn't go away in a moment. Maybe you've felt that. Maybe you've done something in your life that's inexcusably wrong, wicked. And you've carried the weight of it for years, maybe. Or maybe it's just been months. But something is tearing at you and it will not go away easily. This will be something that will hang over the sons of Israel for years. But it, Joseph here assures them because he has a strong view of God's providence. His, his strong theology practical theology, lived, believed, experiential theology allows him to be gracious to his brothers. Don't be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here because God sent me before you to preserve life. God sent me before you to preserve a remnant. It's not you who sent me here, but God. Now, later in chapter 50, he's going to say you intended it for evil, but God meant it for good. They did do what they did. But it was God's hand that brought Joseph to Egypt. And he can see it as clear as day now. And he's not going to blame. He's not going to seek revenge. He's going to welcome them and their children and their children's children and their flocks and their herds and all that they have. He's going to provide graciously for all of them. It's a glorious reunion and it's a gracious provision not only from Joseph, but also even from Pharaoh. Perhaps a preview of how Israel will be enriched by Egypt when they go out in the Exodus, some 400 years down the line. But now, Pharaoh says, take it. Take everything. Take as much as you possibly can. Wagons for the women and children and the old men. Donkeys loaded down with the best of Egypt and the grain. Bring them, bring them here and bring them a warm welcome. Have no concern. I love this verse 20. Have no concern for your goods, for the best of all of the land of Egypt is yours. You don't need to bring anything with you because we're going to give you anything you want in the entirety of the land of Egypt. This is gracious generosity. This is gracious hospitality. This is gratitude for a man who has saved Egypt from destruction by the hand of God. This is how we as Christians should be with our things that God's given us. We should be open-handed, freely generous, 
After all, Jesus has saved us from eternal destruction at the cost of his own life, and he calls us to be generous. He calls us to be open-handed and warm-hearted and kind and, and loving and welcoming, and we should be that way abundantly and willingly. Joseph still doesn't trust his brothers, though. <laughs> it, the, the realism here, the Bible is so realistically, even after all this wonderful dramatic reveal and glorious reunion and gracious provision, still Joseph says to his brother, don't quarrel on the way. <laughs> he knows his brothers. Don't you guys go to fighting now? Uh, this, is, this is very realistic. This is the way that the sons of Israel are, and this is the way believers can be today. We're on our way, aren't we? We're on our pilgrim journey to our heavenly home where our Father waits for us and will welcome us, and, and the new heavens and the new earth will be wide open to us, and we will be with him forever. But don't quarrel on the way. I think that's a word for us in our pilgrim journey. Don't quarrel on the way. Be thankful for the gracious provision of God. Be generous, be kind, and don't quarrel on the way. Israel has a hard time believing the truth. He is stunned and now he just wants to go and see his son while he's still alive and tomorrow will bring us to that reunion. So I hope you can be with us for Genesis 46 tomorrow. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful chapter. We've been waiting for it for so many days now. It's such a joy to read of your grace and your provision and your blessing. It's so wonderful to see how good you are in the lives of your people. Help us to see that in our own lives, that though we go through trial and hardship and pain, though we bear guilt for our sin, we have been forgiven, we have been reconciled, we have been welcomed, you graciously provide for our needs, you call us to be open-handed and generous with others, and you call us not to quarrel on the way. So help us respond to your grace with grace and gratitude. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, come back and join us tomorrow for Genesis 46, day 71. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Mm -hmm.